Yo, what's up everyone? In this video, I will be showing you how to make a GUI where you can type in the ID of a clothing or an accessory and it'll put that on for you. So let's get started with the first step, which is to create the GUI. So I'm just going to create a very bare bones GUI with a frame, which I'm going to drag to the center, expand out a little bit. And then I will be putting in a first a text box. This will act as the place where you can type in your ID. And next we can add a text button, which will go below this and it will just say um, put on in the text. And we can scale that up so it kind of looks like that. And inside the text box, I'm going to be setting the placeholder text to enter ID so people know where to enter the ID. Okay, so that's it for the basic GUI. Now I want to be able to handle uh, clicking this button. So let's start by putting in a local script inside of the frame. We need to make two variables, one to the text box and one to the text button. Now we need to be able to detect when the button is clicked. So to do that, there is a event inside of the text button called mouse button one click. Now that event, you can connect that over to a function. Now, before we continue, you have to realize that in order to put on the clothing, we have to do this on the server side because only the server can download the information from the Roblox servers and put it on for everyone to see. So we have to make a server script to handle that. So inside my server script service, I'm going to be adding a script and also in replicated storage, I'm going to be adding a remote event and then, and I'm going to call this remote event put on close. So basically the local script will via the remote event, call the server script, which will then put on the close on, on this player. So let's make a variable inside the local script pointing to the event. And set, I'll just call it event and set that equal to game dot replicated storage. Make sure you are always waiting for the child and we put in the name of the event there. Now all we have to do is inside of the function, uh, we'll call the fire server function of the event. And we can just, uh, we need to put in the ID, which is found in the text box. So we just say text box dot text and that is going to be what the person types in into the ID box. So that should be it for the local script side. Now let's move on to the server script side. First, I'm going to make a variable pointing to the event, which I'm going to set the game that replicated storage dot put on close. And when this event is fired to the server, we can connect that over to a function. And when a client calls a remote event, which go to the server, it always passes in the player, even if you do not specify. And then uh, all your other arguments go after that. So we have an ID after that. So that's our function on the server side. Now let's start handling it. So there's three different types of objects that you can put on the characters. First one is an accessory, which, is, which are things that cover a broad range, like hats and headphones and whatever, like tails and stuff. And then there's a shirt and then there's uh, pants. So we need to be able to handle all three of those. And I'm going to be doing just that. But before we can put on the clothes onto the player, we need to be able to download the clothes from the Roblox server. And to do that, we're going to use a game service called insert service. So I'm going to make a variable called insert service and set that to game dot game get service insert service. And basically insert service will allow us to pass in an asset ID and download that off the Roblox server. And we can put it inside our game, like in the workspace or something temporarily. So we can use um, our insert service to get the asset. So let's make uh, a function called uh, asset model. We can set that to insert service, load asset, and we pass in the ID. And that's it. Now, when you do this, it'll insert a model with the clothes inside of it. So we can set the first set the parent over to the workspace. Now, since the asset is the child of the model, we need to get the child of uh, the asset model object. 
And to do that, there's a... It's a little complicated, but it can be accomplished in one line. So to do that, you can make a variable called, like, asset. And set it equal to asset model. And then call the get children function on that. And then right after that, you do a list index for the first object. So, it gets the children, right? And uh, when you use insert service to get an asset, there's only going to be one children, and that's going to be the asset you call for. So, uh, the indexing for the first object will always work. So now, we have the actual asset object, but this asset can be um, an accessory, a shirt, or a pants. So, we need to handle all three cases using if statements. So we can start an if statement by saying if asset is a, I'm going to check if it's an accessory. If it's an accessory, then there's a nifty function inside the humanoid that can just put on an accessory for you in one line. So let's do that. We can say player.character.humanoid add accessory, passing in the asset. Now let's make an else if, else if it is a shirt then we can put on the shirt by setting the pa assets parent equal to the player that character now before this we need to delete the old shirt of the player we, we can't have two shirts so we need to delete the old shirt and to do that we can just say if player dot character find first child which is a and we can check if and we can check if it has a shirt already if it does then we can just delete that by saying colon destroy all right now we need to do the same thing for our pants so else if asset i asset is a pants then it's basically the same as the shirt we can just copy and paste that except change it everything that has shirt over to pants this is gonna get changed this is gonna get changed so yeah that's like that and then we can delete the asset model since we don't need it all right so let's see if this works so i have my gui here and i have a just a random sh uh, shirt id that i have and i'm gonna test it Okay, so I'm playtesting, and I, I have my GUI right here. I'm going to type into the text box the ID of the shirt that I have. I'm going to click the Put On button. And uh, I haven't made any code to hide the GUI yet, so I'm just going to manually hide the GUI by going inside of my uh, player. Inside the players. And manually turning off that. And you can see I'm wearing the, the rainbow shirt that I got off the library. So, you can see this works. Now we can code some extra functionality to uh, hide the GUI. But first, make sure that your uh, basic functionality is working before you proceed. So we can make a button inside of the screen GUI. We can set it to the left. And we can say like, uh, we can say in the text, put on clothes, da da da. And inside that local script, we can make a variable over to that text button. So that show button equals script dot parent parent dot text button. And when show button is clicked, we can connect that over to a function. And we can set that to script dot parent dot dot visible equals true. And inside the first function, uh, after firing the event, we can uh, hide the frame by setting the script.parent.visible to false and by default we want the frame to be not visible so we can uncheck that and we can test it now so there's a button on here I'm gonna click that it shows I'm gonna type in my ID click put on and there it goes um, so yeah that's it for the tutorial thanks for watching bye guys